Hello, everyone, and welcome to Caught in the Wool podcast. I am your host, Sam B, and I am filming from the living room at Bumblebee Acres Farm, where I live and work with the four other bumblebees, which include Carissa, uh, also known as Queen Bee, um, my mother and the mother of the other bees, Sen Bee, um, my sister, Baby B, my other sister, and Bro B, my brother. And we all uh, live and work here on the farm to farm wool. We have Cormo and Shetland sheep. If you are new, I'll give you the little recap. Um, Cormo Shetland and Shetland sheep and some crosses. We also have uh, Pygor goats, Angora rabbits, and we also hand dye yarn as well. Uh, oftentimes it is fandom based and you <laughs> can check it all out on our website. So it has been a hot minute since I have filmed a podcast. Um, as in, goodness, it has been like, hmm, I believe the last one I filmed was either January or December. So 2021 or January 2022. <laughs> so it has been it has been a little bit. But if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for stopping by and watching the episode. And if you are new here, thank you also for checking it out. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll try to make it an enjoyable episode. Basically, um, I have not filmed for so long because we have a Patreon and I do at least one monthly vlog for our Patreon. So I kind of do some like behind the scenes and just, you know, little tidbits of what happens throughout that month. Um, I also film little preview commercial type deals for our shop updates. So you can um, check those out on the channel if you want to, uh, just to get an idea of it. I'm actually going to be referencing the latest one in a little bit. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be splitting this video up into chapters. So you can check those chapters out down below the video if you want to skip around. But otherwise, um, you can just sit tight, grab your knitting, and I'm going to talk to you guys about like, what we have been up to if you aren't a patron or are new here. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm also going to talk about Rhinebeck because we just got back from Rhinebeck and that is very, very exciting. So I was supposed to do like a outline, but the evening is getting you know, closer and the lighting is leaving soon. So I wanted to make sure that I um, got the filming done before the afternoon sun comes in through the window because our living room window is west facing. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I got this filmed and up and all of that stuff, you know, filmed and done, not filmed and up, up will be uploaded later, but anyway yeah it's been it's been a while since I have done a video so I am going to first tell you guys what we have been up to so yeah um I'm gonna just talk about autumn so I wanted to do a podcast before we went to Rhinebeck talking about Wisconsin sheep and wool and since I didn't get to I'm going to be rolling it into this video and then talking about Rhinebeck um talking about what's going on on the farm talking about projects that I have been working on and patterns I have published. I will not be talking about the other bees projects this time just because it has been so long. It has been so long since I podcasted and um, I do have quite a few projects that I'm working on or planning and oh, I just I didn't want to sit here for three hours talking about everybody's projects. So so we are just going to be talking about what I have here today. And I know that it is Halloween witchy vibes all behind me. Um, I am totally living for it. And yeah, I just, I, I love it. Anyways, um, so first and foremost, I will be talking about Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. So Wisconsin Sheep and Wool happened in September. I believe it is always the first or second weekend. It's usually, um, 
what is it, Labor Day weekend, I want to say. Is that Labor Day? I always get Labor Day and Memorial Day mixed up. I hope it's Labor Day. Um, but yeah, it's always like that weekend. So uh, it is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday show, and it is in Jefferson, Wisconsin. It is a lovely show. It's been a little different this year and last year, opposed to what it was pre-COVID. But the world is adjusting still, so I am just letting it, you know, be, and I mean, yeah. We used to do a lot of shows. Now we have narrowed down our shows to only three a year. So you can only buy our yarn in person at three events a year. And that is um, Maryland Sheep and Wool in May, and then Wisconsin Sheep and Wool in September, and New York Sheep and Wool, aka Rhinebeck, in October. So those are our three um, shows. Luckily, you know, the website really grew, our online shop really grew, so we have been able to focus more on creativity and less travel and putting a lot of energy into the colors we create for online updates opposed to doing like, um, like, I don't know, like hustling like gypsies, <laughs> which was what our life was like a lot before COVID. So it's kind of it, COVID changed a lot of things for us. Um, I would say some things for the better. So that is, you know, nice. We were able to work with it. But currently our most recent online shop update was our winter update. And you can still find some of those skeins online. We will not be restocking any of those colors. So if you see something you like, definitely grab it now. Uh, I know that people asked a lot about returning colors. <laughs> I will get to that in a bit when I talk a little bit more about shop updates, but we went to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool and we got seven sheep. <laughs> we already have a bunch of sheep, um, but because of COVID, again, we weren't able to breed for, I think it's going on our third or fourth year, we have not bred our sheep because we moved to this farm right before COVID. So while we were searching for a farm slash moving, we did not breed our sheep. And then once we moved, uh, like less than six months later, COVID hit. So uh, the vets were being very strange about, well, not strange, but I mean, they were being very cautious and a lot of them would not do farm visits. And we, um, you know, there are four women of us on our farm and only one man, which is my uh, the youngest bee, my brother, he's 19 now. And we just did not want to, uh, you know, risk something happening to any of the sheep. But unfortunately now a lot of them are getting on the older side. So we have been trying to um, build up our flock and then start working on our breeding program. And we got seven beautiful uh, Shetland ewes. So I put footage of them in the last Patreon vlog. So September's Patreon vlog, if you want to check that out, but they are beautiful. They are all um, colored in different, really cool colors that we haven't really had, um, like light browns. I think Moritz is one of the colors. Um, I don't know a bunch of, a bunch about different sheep colors and like the names for them, but they are all super beautiful. We have two black um, use and I just love, I love black wool. I know a lot of people, a lot of people talk about how they don't like knitting with black yarn, but I, oh my gosh, I, I just feel like it's so rich and beautiful and like how like natural it is. Like <laughs> my very first Rhinebeck, I went to, gosh, I was, I was in college at the time and I went with our knitting group and one of the first booths I went to, they had uh, a natural pitch black alpaca wool blend. And I think I still have two skeins. I bought three skeins of it. It was on sale. I guess nobody wanted the black yarn, but it was divine. And I bought all three skeins and I made one hat out of them, and out of one of the skeins and I loved working with it. So I am a huge fan of black yarn. Um, I don't know why. It's just, I mean, it's not like all I want to knit with, but I, it has, 
it has its merits. So, um, yeah, we got seven beautiful U's. Uh, three are adults. They're between the ages of like two and three, I want to say. Um, two of them are proven, so they've had babies. The black adult U might be pregnant. We aren't sure yet. Um, she was accidentally bred and then the four other ones are little are little babies and they're so cute they are they're absolutely adorable and they came from the sweetest um woman and her husband and they are getting out they were getting out of their shetlands they raised a more fine wool shetland so our um, other Shetland were a little bit more on the coarser side. These ones are actually a lot closer to Cormo in wool. So we are very excited to see what the crossing will look like. And also now we have enough Shetland to make our own Shetland yarn. And I'm very excited about that as well. So it's very excited. It's very, I know I keep saying excited, but it is so exciting when you get new sheep. And they're so cute. Like Shetlands are just are just so cute and they're so well socialized the little babies come up to me and I can like scratch their chin and they're just they're just precious so yes um then uh the show went great um thank you to everybody who might have come out to that show if you're watching now thank you so much for coming out and supporting us and it was great seeing you uh I just, I love that show and it's really nice because it's only about an hour away from our farm. So we were able to drive home and go to sleep <laughs> here in our own beds, which is a blessing. <laughs> it is, it is a blessing. But uh, yeah, so what else is happening? Uh, we came home, started dying like crazy for Rhinebeck, Sen B, my sister Sen B, and Queen B are the head dyers. Baby B does the yarn processing, so she does the um, dry processing, so she twists uh, the skeins and tags them. I do everything in between. And now that we are home from Rhinebeck, we will be working on advents and shipping those out. So our our advents have already been, um, they went up as pre-orders at the very beginning of this year. So if you are interested in our advents, next year uh, we are going to be doing, I think, to like doing a completely new theme. Um, we were doing like a series of Lord of the Rings advents. And then this past year we were, I mean, this year we are also doing a Bridgerton advents, but Lord of the Rings one is ending, so I don't know what next year's theme will be, but I am very excited. Uh, we'll just be doing one theme next year. And yeah, so we're going to be working on getting those all out uh, probably by the second week of November, second or third week of November. And yeah, so Rhinebeck was awesome. I will be posting a vlog of all the behind the scenes um, Rhinebeck stuff probably here on the main channel and that will count as um my patreon vlog for the month just because doing more than one vlog is a little tricky because you only have so much content but i want to show everybody what happened at rhinebeck so uh yeah i will be doing that the colors were beautiful it was so magical at rhinebeck and the crowds were insane so if we met you at Rhinebeck or you came and stopped by at Rhinebeck it was so great seeing you thank you so much for your support it really means everything to our family and yeah um we went to Rhinebeck uh well we left about 4 a.m on Wednesday the Wednesday beforehand so we could get to Rhinebeck and set up Thursday uh, we slept in the car on the way there just because hotels have been very sketchy in our experience since COVID. Like we used to stay at Holiday Inn Expresses because they were usually pretty like updated and nice and well kept like you know and then this the past few shows we've had to stay at at hotels they are always so run down so we have just been not we just did not want to deal with that on the way there uh we slept a few hours in the car and then went we set up 
and then we walked around downtown Rhinebeck. We went to our favorite place to eat, which is Village uh, Pizza in Rhinebeck. It is, or, well, our favorite pizza place to eat while we are out in New York. It is so good. So if you're ever there, the Village Pizza is the best New York pizza, in my opinion. And... Uh, yeah, we just walked around a little bit. We went to Paper Trail and to the bookstore. Um, I love Paper Trail because they kind of have, um, they have some really nice, like, handmade and more cute, I don't know how to describe it. They, like, some, like, homewares, like, they'll have, uh, like, dishcloths and such things like that. Um, but they also have a lot of notebooks <laughs> and if you have been around you know that I am obsessed with planning and notebooks and things like that. So uh, that is one of the first stops and I got some real this pack of really cool uh, watercolor postcards. So they're postcards on the back but they are watercolor paper so you can walk you know, do your own watercolor. I am not good at watercolor, but my goal is to someday be good at watercolor. So I, um, I thought that that was cool and we picked up that. We picked up some really, this pack of really cute uh, sticky notes and I might make a journal video and show that kind of stuff. But since this is like the yarn podcast caught in the wool, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that stuff too much. Um, Senbi got a couple of books at the bookstore that she had been wanting. Friday, we went up to, so we like to set up on Thursday because a lot of people set up on Friday and it is chaos and so difficult to, you know, maneuver and everything. So we just get there a day early and um, we went to Williamstown, Massachusetts, which is where I went to college, Williams College, on Friday. And every year at Williams, they have a random Friday that the president of the college decides is the perfect October Friday. They decide to do Mountain Day, and that's where they go up to the mountains, and they have apple cider donuts, the a cappella uh, groups all sing, and it is a very magical, magical time. We had already planned on going there because we haven't been in a few years, and we wanted to have um, the Indian food there. They have a wonderful Indian restaurant called Spice Root, and it is incredible. It is probably the best Indian food I have had in my life. <laughs> I've been to a few restaurants, but you know, I live in the Midwest, so there's not many many options out here but spice root is so so good and the service is wonderful um so we went there and we went to the we went to goffs which is the downtown like little um merch college merch store I had always wanted, when I went to school there, I did not have much money. I was a, I was a full scholarship student. So I, you know, and I had a campus job, but that money I saved for, you know, my medicine, um, you know, every once in a while getting to go out to dinner with my friends and also um, like flights home for the holidays. So I didn't get to buy like tons and tons of stuff. So I had a hoodie, like a Williams hoodie going there, but all of the um, like hoity-toity kids always had Columbia like zip up jackets and they had the Williams like an emblem like embroidered on the like heart of the jacket. And I always, I always wanted one. I always wanted one and I finally got one and I'm so happy and I know it's like so silly but like I just I always wanted one so badly I thought that they looked so cool and um yeah so I got this beautiful like gray Columbia jacket with the emblem on it and I'm very excited I also got oh and I didn't bring any of the pottery stuff that we purchased but I will put that that stuff will be in the vlog so um but we got some po beautiful pottery that uh like this beautiful like hand painted uh, mug like throne mug that from the williams shop we also got two mugs from the show and i am i don't think i remember the name of it's 
the potter that's in building B at Rhinebeck. I'm not going to remember the name off the top of my head, but I wanted, I will put that, I will put that in the vlog that I upload. Um, but yeah, so uh, we did not go like crazy purchasing things at well, Wisconsin Sheep and Wool or Rhinebeck, but I did get a few things and I wanted to show you guys some of that. So behind me, I have this. Okay, this is so cool. This is a, and I'm going to forget the name because I have so much in my head, Dan Tracy Designs. They are also in Building B, like right next to the potter. They had this spindle stand and it is amazing. It has this um, little hook thingy here. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna focus beyond my face, but you can ply right from the stand. So I put my spindles, my support spindles in here. I also have a spindle from um, Wisconsin Sheep and Wool and a drop spindle that I am going to actually be selling this drop spindle here that has like um it's it's hard to show but anyways this thing is so cool and I've decided to just keep it here because it's just so cool but I wanted to show you guys this so it is beautiful but I do not use drop spindles it is made with um black colored pencils but yeah it's very sad I just don't use I just don't use drop spindles so I'm going to be putting up it up for sale it is so beautiful but I'm too short I'm too short to use drop spindles um and then I wanted to show you oh and my, my little turtle spindle is there <laughs> turtle spindle that's what I call my Turkish spindles because they make turtle like they call the little yarn wrap thing a turtle on it so I call it my turtle spindle <laughs> anyways um yeah I love support spindles because I am so short and I got this beautiful I'm just gonna stand up to show you guys this beautiful beautiful carved spindle just like look at that from the dancing goats at Wisconsin sheep and wool um or the dancing goats goat or goats oh goodness now I'm gonna mess it up um and yeah I I just had to because as you can see the beautiful oh, beautiful carving on it is just such a such a vibe so I'm pretty much I think set on the spindles that I will be <laughs> having for a while but I just I wanted to show you how cool how cool it is. It's just genius. So if you are big into support spindles, you should definitely check out Dan Tracy designs. Just so cool. I also got, and I don't know where I put it, a, um, it's a lap bowl that straps around your thigh. And I don't know, I couldn't find where I put it, but those I purchased from Rhinebeck. The spindle I got from Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. I also got from Wisconsin Sheep and Wool this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn. So I am going to get up close and show you guys. Hopefully you can see. I'm hoping it's so I have this on cinematic so it focuses on me a little bit better. This is a beautiful worsted yarn. Um, and I am going to forget what her, what their business name is, like what they actually call their business. But the spinner is Deb Klein. And if you ever been, they are at Wisconsin Sheep and Wool and, um, and New York Sheep and Wool, and I want to say they were also at Maryland Sheep and Wool, but they have been in the business for a very long time. This yarn is hand spun, and it has um, Romney wool, alpaca, and silk blended in it. And it is, she says, 268 yards per 5.4 ounces. So it's a little bit like, it's a, it's a bulky, I would say. 
that this is a bulky yarn and I got four skeins of it. It was quite the investment, but this is the kind of yarn that you just can't... Hand dyed yarn is beautiful and all, and I mean, that's like our primary, our primary thing, right, is hand dyed yarn. Um, and and it is it is special and beautiful, but there is something about hand spun yarn that is just stunning. So I will put their business name down in the comments below, or not the comments, the video description. You can find everything down there um, for all of the businesses that I am mentioning that I purchased from. And if I can find a link to a website for them, I will post that as well. But I just... Um, I am just in love with this. It is so, it is so soft and it is so beautiful and I think I'm going to make a sweater out of it because it is just like that beautiful and uh, I almost went back because she had so much beautiful yarn and you know I knew that the next show she was doing was going to be and they have supply like they have supplies and everything they are often the ones who have those baskets with the straps that are kind of like backpacks um, and they have zauber balls and other like hooks and needles and all kinds of stuff, roving, um, I don't, and wheels, I think as well. And they are just really sweet, um, of older couple and she hand spins all this yarn and it's just, it's so beautiful. Um, I almost wanted to buy more at Rhinebeck and then I said, no, you know what, I'm going to make it like a yearly thing. Uh, Queen Bee and Sen Bee also each got um, a few skeins of a certain lot, spin lot, spin die lot that she did, and at Wisconsin as well, and yeah, so I'm super excited. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with it, but it's probably going to be a sweater or a cardigan just because it is so, there's so much of it, uh, four skeins, and this was not the biggest skein, so I have quite a bit of yardage. Bit, quite a bit of yardage to work with. Um, and then I, at Dancing Goat, I got a couple of other things. One of them was a surprise actually from Sen Bee and Queen Bee because they went there first. They got me this copper, this beautiful copper lap bowl. So I don't know if it's gonna focus quite right, but Basically, if you are spinning, you can put this on your lap um, and kind of like tuck it in and spin off of that, which is, and it's so beautiful. Um, I want to say this is a, this is a coin. It's one penny from circa 1937. I want to say it's from a different country though. I forget what it is, but the whole thing is copper, so it has that nice copper smell and will, <laughs> the penny smell, and it will have um, develop a beautiful patina. It's already started a little bit, so I am super excited to try that out. I love like everything support spindles and lap bowls and things like that. He also had, well, him and his wife, <laughs> Dancing Goat, they had these beautiful needle gauges. So let me try to get this to focus here. Look at how beautiful this is. He also had a maple, I believe it was a maple leaf. It was a maple leaf or an oak leaf. And I, I used it. Now I can't, I can't find it. I couldn't find it before, before filming. So I just have this one, but it is so beautiful. And I just want, like, I don't know. I like, if you guys have noticed, we have a lot of, um, like, Lord of the Rings uh, yarn collections. We are very into everything that is sort of Tolkien vibey. So anything that has hobbity or elfish vibes to it is very much our aesthetic. So that's just kind of that's just kind of how it is here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is everything that I purchased at Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. And then at New York Sheep and Wool, um, I got 
this basket that has a bunch of finished knits in it and one of my whips. Um, it is a beautiful like purpley color but I have not had one of these round baskets before and they just are so perfect for blankets. Queen Bee had one, um, has had one for a while though hers is a little bit smaller. We didn't realize that this one was bigger but I love that it's like purple and gold which are my college colors. <laughs> I, I thought it was blue though when we got it. I thought it was more of a navy but now that if you see it in certain lights it's much more purpley and um yeah it's holding all of my all of my knits to show you guys in a little bit like the finished patterns I wanted to show you guys and all of that stuff um but I got that basket I got the lap full strap thing from the Dan Tracy designs that I mentioned and I got the stand <laughs> And also this yarn. So just like hand spun yarn, I find that farm yarn is just so, here, let me get it to focus. Come on. There we go. I find that farm yarn is just so precious. So a lot of times I will buy farm yarn from shows just because it is, I guess my philosophy around it is that farm yarn is like hand spun, kind of going back to the roots of it. And especially at Sheep and Wool shows, a lot of times that's where farmers go to vend their actual farm wool. And they are the ones that are keeping, you know, it afloat. I mean, it is the, it is the bread and butter, basically, I find of the wool industry are those small farmers. So I want to support them. Um, this is from Cloverworks Farm, which we have been following on Instagram for a very, very long time. And this is from their blue faced lice, uh, Leicester, lice, I always, okay. <sighs> I know how to say it. I just can't say it. So, Blue Face Leicester, BFL. Let's just say BFL. <laughs> this is from their BFL flock. So, uh, it is approximately 200 yards. Um, it doesn't say how much weight per skein, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's probably 100 grams. It, feel, it feels like a 100 gram skein. Um, but it is, I got, I got several skeins of it all in this dye lot of this beautiful orangey autumnal color. She is actually going to be selling her yarn while well, her, her sheep wool yarn under a different brand, which I can't remember the name of right now, but it's her best friend's uh, farm. She has um, some like serious shoulder arm injuries so she would not um and I don't know her name so I'm just calling her she but the Cloverworks farm uh shepherdess has had to get rid of her flock um and gave it to her best friend who she will be using the wool from so she'll still be at New York Sheep and Wool and selling their their yarn but it will be under a different name um but they, she's based in Vermont, so yeah, I'm I'm super in love with this. I love BFL. It is one of my favorite, favorite wools. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. These might be 50 gram skeins now that I'm thinking about it. It seems awfully, I mean, she says on here, no, she doesn't even say suggested needle, just suggested gauge seven to seven and a half stitches per inch. And I do not know what that means. Is that, I think, I mean, it's either a sport or a fingering looking at it. So we will see. Uh, I'm not going to like rush into a decision on it. But yeah, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what I have been knitting on as of late. So I 
have, and I have some yarns that I stole from our, our booth. I did, I did bring those and I wanted to show you guys real quick. So I stole some Squishy DK from our booth at Wisconsin Sheep and Wool. These are actually yarns that I had set aside to do the Ode to Autumn Shawl by Jennifer Rundhog on Ravelry uh, or Driftless Knitter. I have had that Ravel that pattern in my Ravelry library since it came out and I wanted to do it with our Indian Corn 2.0 color and either our Plum Pudding um, Tonal Yarn or this Simon Wine and Roses from our um, Bridgerton collection. So I am super, super excited about this. It is so warm and autumnal and beautiful and I wanted to start working on it right away, but we will see. <laughs> it may not be a project I start this autumn. It may be a next autumn, even though I balled it up and everything. I know it's sad, but it is what it is. I also kidnapped because I have been wanting one of these for forever. And of course it's on squishy sock. I always tell people that I love socks out of Arco Pet Sock Yarn, but for some reason I only ever knit it out of squishy sock because that's all I ever really, that's all I ever really have on hand um, or end up stashing just because it's what's there. So I love squishy sock and a lot of people love it and everything. And I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be doing socks out of this, but it was the only one left of this color out of our hobgoblin color. And just look at how beautiful this is. So I'll bring it up close for you to see. It's just, it's just so beautiful. So yes, I, uh, I love this guy. And yeah, so those, that's it for things that I kidnapped and acquired. So now let's talk about knitting. And then I will talk about the shop update that will be next Friday. And everything about New York Sheep and Wool will be in the vlog. I didn't want to make this more than like an hour long video if I could help it. Um, and I, I'm sure I forgot to mention some things, but it is what it is. But I wanted to talk about the patterns that I came out with recently. So first and foremost was the Mon Chéri shawl, which I have here knit out of three of our newest colors, um, House of the Dragon colors. So we have Rhaenyra, um... This one is, oh, the Iron Throne, I believe. I believe it's Iron Throne. I always, okay, I always get Iron Throne and Dragonstone mixed up, but I think it's Iron Throne. And then down here we have Fire and Blood, and I am obsessed with it. So this shawl has three spines. It is a top-down shawl, and it wears really, really cool. So I will show you guys. I will stand and show you guys a little bit of how you can wear and style a shawl that has three spines. It stays on so well. It is just, it is just so nice. It is Oh, it, it doesn't have the point usually. I mean, you can wear it like that. You can wear it with the point, um, your like main center, center spine in the front. You can wear it like this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. You know, it's, it's your shawl. You style it how you want to. Uh, it's your party. You can cry how you want to, or when you want to, or if you want to, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, I love wearing it like kind of thrown over like it's great for like a shawl pin it kind of just stays on really really well in my opinion when you wear it like this and of course my hair is going everywhere and before I had it um kind of tucked like this and thrown over but yeah so <sighs> this is one of the samples we had at New York Sheep and Wool Queen B knit this sample and it is out of our squishy DK. So the pattern is on Ravelry and I will link it below. But um, yeah, it requires three skeins of squishy DK. You can also do it all in one color if you want or two colors, but 
there is notes on color theory to kind of make it pop. Typically you want your color A, which would be Rhaenyra and Fire and Blood is color C to kind of complement each other. And then you want color B to be your contrast or pop to kind of divide those up. But yeah, it is beautiful. The other sample that you'll see in the pattern I knit actually for my best friend, Hannah Lou from Hannah Lou Designs, who makes the project bags that we carry in our shop. I have a medium here from our autumn update um, that I have been working on a project in, and I will show you in a little bit. I actually knit that sample of that shawl for her and created it for her for a um, wedding gift last year. So I don't have that one to show <laughs> because it was her wedding gift. And, um, oh, I'm, I need to get a drink of water. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, um, whew talking too fast but um yeah so I gave her that for her for her wedding and the shawl is now live and I just I don't know I'm very happy with it I think that it's one that you can do really funky colors with or like really dramatic like that one or very soft like you'll see in the main photos on on Ravelry but I also designed this which is the pine cobble hat and I just I am so so thrilled I will show you guys up close this hat I am so thrilled with how it turned out it is double knit and I'm gonna turn it inside and out for you because it is technically it is technically um, completely reversible. So I wanted to design a slouchy beanie based off of one that I had seen some YouTuber wearing. And I wanted to make it a knitting pattern. It was definitely like a machine knit store bought acrylic hat. Um, but it had this awesome texture on it and I believe the one that he was wearing was stockinette and reverse stockinette squares. This is stockinette and garter because that will give your stitches your sections less pull. So if you had done if I had done reverse stockinette all of them would be pulling in different directions um, and they it wouldn't lay flat as beautifully. So I decided to go with the with the garter instead. Um, it is all double knit, so you knit it as you go. It is wonderfully slouchy. Um, I'm going to put it on, but my hair will be a mess after, just a warning. But um, so you can see it is slouchy and cute. Um, you don't have to put a pom-pom, but I wanted to do a pom-pom. Um, I'll show you up close how cute this is. And if you don't want it as slouchy, it's great because all you do is you can roll up your brim a little bit more and make it a nice beanie cap style hat. So I am so happy with how this turned out. I had started it last fall um, and this pom-pom I did not secure as great as I, I could have. I I'm not used to faux fur pom-poms and I accidentally got one that's slightly bigger than I probably would have normally gotten um, but I didn't have the hat finished when I purchased the pom-pom and I loved the color and it looks great in the photos but yeah it's a little it's a little too floppy <laughs> I gotta I gotta do some sort of I gotta help this thing out a little bit but it is it feels and it wears like a beanie you would pick up at a at a store which is exactly what I wanted for it. I wanted it to have that type of structure and um, kind of like memory. It is all fingering and it is made out of our Lux Flock Sock yarn. So our Lux Flock Sock, that's the best part, is our 80% cord, 
Hormo non superwash wool from our own flock and 20% silk. And it is milled down the road at, um, at Round Barn uh, Fiber Mill from us. So that's super local. Um, the Cormo is sent to Zeilinger to be made into um, top first. So that's the, the first process. If you want to know the whole process, I will tell you while I hold this like a little friend next to me. So first things first, we shear our sheep in the spring. We take all of our wool to Maryland Sheep and Wool with us, so we don't have to ship it, and we bring it to um, Zeilinger's uh, like wool drop-off point out in the parking field, and then we get it back, and usually they get it to us during the summer um, or fall and we bring it over to Round Barn and they blend it and spin it into the most delicious, beautiful yarn. I have the leftovers from this actually right here. I haven't weighed this, so I don't know how much technically was left, but it was a good, it was a good amount for technically making like two hats out of, <laughs> out of one ball. But, um, yeah, it's, it's then spun over there. We bring it back to the farm. We dye it. Um, and this was our natural color, brown color, brown gray colored yarn that we dye over and it gives us these beautiful jewel tone yarns. We also have a batch of just white that we dye into pastels and all of that will be in the Rhinebeck update this coming Friday. So I'm very excited about that. The yarn is just, is beautiful. Um, it's just, it was a dream to work with. It is so soft. It is holding up so well for it being such a fine, fine yarn, um, or I mean a fine wool. And yeah, I'm just, it's, it's just a dream. So this hat is up on Ravelry now as well, and it's great for basically any fingering weight project. Like I wanted a fingering weight hat that didn't lose its shape. Like I feel like, or is not warm enough. I mean, I live in Northern Illinois, so we, so I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Southern Wisconsin type weather in the Midwest, it gets pretty cold. I think like, you know, we get Arctic temperatures coming down sometimes. And I just wanted something that, I don't know, looked very polished, classic, and um, kept its shape and structure really well. And I also, it kind of reminded me of college. So I named it after Pine Cobble, which is one of the uh, mountains in Williamstown. So that was very cool getting to go back to Williamstown for mountain day and you know, having just released this hat, like it was just, I don't know, it was very nostalgic and nice. Um, but yeah, that is on Ravelry right now. And I also wanted to show you this Winterfell cloak because it had gotten, it has gotten a, I don't know like what to say, like it's been given new life for some reason. People have just, we're just going crazy for it at New York Sheep and Wool, which is very exciting because I came up with this pattern back in, oh, like, gosh, I mean, what was it? 2017? 2017, I think? but it is a super cute cloak and I wanted to show you what it looks like with coquette sock held together. So the pattern is written to be um, knit in a worsted or Erin. Um, the originals knit in our Sasquatch Erin, but this one is knit in our coquette sock held two strands together. And the button detailing is just a, um, it is just decor. So this just goes right over your head like a kind of like a poncho it's kind of like a mini poncho and it fits underneath a um, like a ooh, what am I trying to say <laughs> like a jacket without a hood 
Like, you know, there's a word for them. For them. I'm not going to remember it now. It's just one of those days. But uh, the hood is, is attached and the hood actually has an I-cord edge around if you wanted to put a drawstring in it. So I um, just wanted to show it because it is, when I designed it back in the day, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, but when I designed it, I thought it is so like, it is a cool concept. Like I wanted something that I could put on for a hood if I was wearing a jacket that wasn't hooded. So you can put it on under your jacket and then you have this nice, basically a cowl to protect your, um, you know, your, your chest and keep it warm, but also has a hood up top and it has the cute cabling details and it's, it's a fun, it's a fun knit. But yeah, so I did have a 15% off code for these two patterns. Um, wait, where did the, where did the shelf go? For these two patterns being released, I am going to be giving you guys a one week 15% off code because this one ended for all patterns in my Ravelry store as well as Senbi's Ravelry store. So that code will be below and you'll be able to use that from, oh, whatever today is. Uh, so this will go up Monday morning. So Monday, October 24th to probably Sunday. So 15% off. And yeah, check that in the description below for all of these patterns and including this one if you are interested in knitting them. Um, and then there are a couple things that are on the needles right now. Well, one that I literally just found off today. So I'm going to run and grab that. And um, also one that I have been working on. I have been working away on. First, I'll show you that one. So first and foremost, I will show you my cottage core blanket. So this is a pattern that I released in January. It is a corner to corner crochet blanket using the half double crochet stitch in a way that makes it uh, fully reversible and kind of acts like a very nice sturdy knit blanket almost. Um, I'm doing my, like you can do it in scrappy, uh, you know, your yarn scraps or leftovers. I'm doing mine in our marshmallow worsted. Um, and you can do it in any needle size. The pattern's written that you can do it in any yarn weight and any needle size. I mean, obviously you have to stay the same needle or not needle size, hook size. You have to stay the same hook and yarn weight throughout your blanket but you can do it in whatever gauge you want. So I am getting to the halfway point on mine. I kind of wanted it to be at least five feet, at least five feet long, and it definitely is. Um, that's how long I am, <laughs> is five feet. So <laughs> I wanted it to, um, you know, go from head to toe so I can tuck it under me and put it on my bed. I have a full-size bed, so, you know, kind of like, Maybe not a full full size blanket size, but close. Um, and yeah, I have just been hooking away on that since January. It actually goes so fast. I'm using a um, USI hook size and our marshmallow worsted. So it's very chunky, crochets up very, very fast. If I keep saying knits up fast or knits, I'm sorry, it is crochet. <laughs> it's just what I normally say. I'm usually talking about knitting. Um, it crochets up super fast and it is just a dream and it works so fast, but I've been trying to come up with patterns and finish patterns. So I haven't been working on it as much lately, but I can get through a skein in like a day, a two, two days of full skein. So it is, it is going, it is in the process of going and let me go and grab that other, um, project that I just bound off today. 
Okay. Okay. I'm back. Sorry about that. I um, blocked it. I bound it off. I blocked it and I had it drying. So this is a new cowl that I have designed using one of our texture packs. So our texture packs have a skein of spun sugar, which is our brushed alpaca silk lace weight yarn and a skein of our Ziggy Sock or our Teddy um, Boucle yarn. So this is a Ziggy Sock one um, pack that I used and I held both strands together and made this super cute cowl. So if you've ever knit or seen my Magic Cake cowl, it is, um, which is a design I came up with a little, a little while back. It has a similar shape it's a little different. Um, it is a little bit tighter and warmer. So this is definitely more like a bandana. Um, it will fit under a pea coat. That is what I was talking about. That's what I was talking about with the Winterfell cloak, a pea coat, because you know, they usually have like a V neck and then like no hood. That's, that's what I was talking about. Okay, so this is super warm, super cozy. It looks hand knit. Um, and it has this eye, like it's almost like an eye cord detailing in the front, if you can see, to make it look like it was seamed in the front. Um, and of course I'm getting little strands of alpaca on my, <laughs> on my lips. But wow, this is, this is cozy and comfortable. I am not 100% sure what I'm naming it. I have a few names in the back of my head. It is so quick and easy to knit up. It's so much fun to knit um, with the little slubs in. So I am super excited to publish this guy. Um, I will probably be publishing it very soon, like in the next week or two, because um, all I have to do all I have to do is just finish writing the instructions on how to, um, sorry, I have alpaca. You know what, surprisingly, the brushed alpaca does not shed as much as brushed mohair, but it does shed a very tiny, like a, a tiny bit. Compared to most things, it does not, though, like I don't have, I don't have it all over my shirt, surprisingly, but I had just blocked it um, and soaked it. So I think a few strands are, are coming free but that's what I had been working on in my in, in this bag and I just wanted to show you how like cute and matchy that is how cute and matchy is that so we will have these texture packs in the update and yeah I just want to show you up close how cute this is like just so cute oh, it turned out perfectly it turned out exactly how I wanted it um just like a cute scrunchy bandana type cowl. Um, practical, warm. It's going to be so cold this year, I know, in the Midwest. So I just wanted something that would be very warm. Um, we will have these texture packs in the update. So um, now, <laughs> now that I have told you all about that, I'm going to tell you about, well, about my knitting, about my designs that I have released. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the update. We will be having the update on Friday. Um, Friday, November. Oh no. Um, gosh, I don't know off the top of my head. What is next Friday? Friday, October. It's still October. You know what it is, what it is. Friday, October 28th will be the shop update. So that will be our Rhinebeck shop update. So that will be everything that we brought to Rhinebeck loaded into the shop and ready to ship. We will also be having um, the t-shirts and I'm showing you guys the my t-shirt and I actually wore it all of Saturday and then washed it. So this is it after being washed, holds up, holds up very well with our 2022 Rhinebeck design. I will also have stickers in case you missed the stickers at the show and these will be ready to ship as well. Um, we'll have some fiber and yeah. 
So that will be what's in the shop and what will be released, well, will be what will be in the shop during November while we are getting advents out and ready and all of that stuff. And then, yeah, I'm just, I'm very excited. I did not bring any of the yarn here with me because almost all of it is shown in the Rhineback preview, which is our most recent uploaded video. And I will also link it below in the description, but all of that Rhineback 2022 stuff will be in the shop. Um, in what quantities are left. I cannot guarantee any restocks on anything that is in the shop. And I also wanted to let you guys know that, uh, sorry, fuzzes, fuzzes in my eye. Um, I wanted to, got to let you guys know about shopping at Rhinebeck or other festivals or shopping or online updates. So this this is pretty much a rule you can apply to all indie dyers, small farms, anything like that. Um, some will be able to be more accommodating about things, but there's still a kind of under underlying rule that you should follow. You should get enough skeins when you see a color or a yarn base or anything. Go and go to the festival. Go into an update understanding that what you buy is all you are going to get. So go into it thinking like if you might need two skeins, buy them. Do not, do not go in thinking, uh, if I need another, I'll just contact them later because the dye lot will be different. It will not be the same and it would be better that you didn't buy any that day and you waited to buy the two later or you know what have you but the problem is then is that with our business we do not regularly restock all of our colors and come here come here hold on i wanted you guys to see my co-host because she was napping on the couch this whole time um but yeah so i'm gonna talk to you guys this is peach my cotton the wool buddy um, but, uh, you guys will know her from previous episodes, but yeah, she was napping. You were napping? Why is your face all curly? Um, yeah, we do not always restock colors. So usually when I do on updates, I'll say no restocks. That means that we don't plan to restock it at least for this year or the next three or four or five or six months at the very least. Uh, we have... <sighs> I would say maybe, maybe 500 colorways already. And they are constantly, they, I mean, Queen Bee and Zambi are constantly coming up and developing more, more colors. So they are very much artists about it and they like to do what is inspiring them in the moment and makes them create the best colors for you guys. And you, I feel like, I feel like we can feel the passion and the beauty when they are truly loving it instead of just cranking out colors nonstop. And it makes our skeins a little bit more of a unique piece of art to work with as well. So I find that very exciting and it's kind of the business model that works for us. But when you go to shows or you buy from an online update, you should consider buying everything for the project you have in mind at that time or pick a different project <laughs> because I have had some and I'm not like calling anybody out because not everybody knows this but I've had some people contact me um like a year later or two years later and they're like I actually need another skein and it's like it's going to be a completely different dye lot and some of that we can't even control because the dye that we get from the dye supply companies is, is not I mean, those jars come with different dye lots. So we could have changed a jar of dye um, sometimes. Like, I mean, we have city water, but since we live in the country, our city's water is a well. So it is, you know, inconsistent um, as far as chemicals go. Like, there's just so much that goes into it that, like, you should really buy for the project at the time. Um, the update will be an hour early for Patreon, so it'll be 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. What? 
what's going on? What's going on for um for the general public? But it will be one hour early access for what you want to go run away? You want to go run away? You want to go nap? Um, for Patreon. So our Patreon link will be below. Um, you, if you are interested in definitely, you know, getting first dibs on things, that is the best way to go. And it's only three dollars a month for our um, most base package, and then you also get access to our um, vlogs as well. But yeah. Um, I think that's everything for today. I hope you guys have a great Halloween. It was great catching up with you. Um, that vlog will be up, I hope, before before Halloween. Well, it should be up before Halloween because it's going to be this month's Patreon vlog. Um, but Peach and I want to thank you for getting caught in the wool with us. Are you so tired right now? Are you so tired right now? Um, but yeah, thank you for getting caught in the wool. Cut in the wall! <laughs> Bye, guys!